Ooh, what is up you guys and of course welcome to another really really nasty <laughs> team planner video from yours truly the Skyrender and today we're now going up against the Dungeon type lotions or Eskilo uh, and his link to his channel is going to be linked of course down below Eskilo is a very very powerful trainer which makes this all the much worse uh, I haven't yeah, he was a part of the TBU, or he is a part of TBU. Uh, we didn't face him there, luckily. Uh, but like I said, he's really, really powerful and has a good feel for the meta. So um, I'm not looking forward to this game because of that reason alone. Now, I just got home from France and uh, I'm doing this uh, basically as I'm waiting for him. So didn't really get the chance to uh, decide what I wanted to show you guys. As always, like the five weeks in a row, I'm not showing you guys my team planner. But I'm going to explain as much as possible what I've been trying to create and what we're going up against. So with that said, uh, we're going to face Victini, Megard War, Ferraforn, Staraptor, Curem, Umbreon, Dolphin, Salmon, Yellow and the Toxic Rogue, as you guys see on the right side of this screen. Um, the thing that stood out for me as I designed a team against uh, Escalo was that he has no mod that is over 100 base speed. That's good. That means that we hopefully can utilize ourselves a little bit here. And, and of course, I think our fairest way or the, the best way for him to actually deal with me is to get up rocks early to make sure that Charizard X is not as much danger as uh, as it could have been. And so I'm definitely see him leading with either Dawn Fan or uh, Veraforn or alternatively uh, a Scar Staraptor. So my main idea is to have a suicide lead with Tyranitar. Uh, we're gonna have Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunder Wave and Stealth Rocks. We need Rocks ourselves for his team uh, to whittle down Salamence and Victini properly. Um, and also we're gonna use Dooblade this time. Uh, also, I should say my suicide lead Tyranitar is uh, modest with max special attack. Uh, it should be enough to 2 hit kill. He's a not fan if it is a special defensive one. And so goes to Fairfor and it always almost falls. If he has a no investment in his uh, special defense, then I'm actually close or a very good chance of OCOing it. Which makes sure that no hazard is on the field because in the end, that's what we want. No hazard. Um, but if you get up rocks, then obviously I need to have Tentacruel. We're gonna get into that a little bit sooner, uh, or in a little bit. Gonna talk about Dewblade first. The reason I have Dewblade because I was juggling Dewblade and Sand Slash. But if I use Sand Slash, that means that I need to have uh, my Tyranitar healthy. That means I don't have an auto response, which sucks. Um, I don't want to be put in a position where Sand Slash is only a proper sweeper if the Sand can continue going. Uh, I'm not going to play that game, I don't want to risk playing a game like that. Uh, Dooblade though represents something really really nice for me. Uh, and that is kind of walling Toxic Rogue, uh, kind of walling Gardevoir, kind of walling Veravorn, kind of walling Sauraptor, um, kind of walling Dawnfan to some extent, no not really. And also it kills Salamence with Jarrah Ball if you set up a Dragon Dance against me. Um, Dooblade just represent that defensive essence of his primarily like momentum sweeper can't touch it um, so that's something I gotta keep in mind he really really need to fall play me or have Victini be more special oriented or basically get me with Yelly Sint against it from force me to sack it that's the only way that's gonna work and of course priority shadow sneak it does around 50% to Mega Gardevoir and Victini uh, Victini depending on his set of course but that's a very, very strong hit against mods that are tough for me to deal with properly because of the issue, of course, the being that are base 100. Uh, next one is, of course, Tentacruel. And uh, the reason we have Tentacruel in this game is for one reason. Uh, it can deal with the rocks. If the rocks are set up, yeah, at least Tentacruel is, is fast enough to make sure that uh, we get some momentum out of that. And also, I was juggling either having and uh, knock off or ice beam. I optimize for uh, for ice beam basically because Salamence. Salamence is an issue, but if I am full defensive, a plus one outrage can't kill us. Um, and an ice beam will definitely kill him uh, if it is uh, of a jolly set of force. If it's adamant, then it is adamant basically, and that's gonna be troublesome to some extent, but you know, that's not the biggest issue because of the next one I'm gonna mention. But basically, Tentacruel is here to clean up if any 
Hazard comes out to make sure that Shard and Sarge can come in and out freely. Uh, next one is Keldio, and I optimize for a Scoff Keldio, and I'm still unsure whether or not it's going to be good or not, but Scarfed Keldio with enough, um, sorry, with enough speed investment to outspeed uh, any 100 base mods he has, uh, and also make sure that if any of his 100 base mods are Scarfed, I'm going to be able to outspeed them anyway. Uh, Skull is close to Oko in Victine anyway, and uh, against uh, Salamence, if you set up a Dragon Dance, an icy wind will KO him anyway, and since I'm scarfed, I will outspeed. So that's it's pretty much a safety net, and I wonder whether or not it's going to be used because that means that I know that if we use Curim or Ferrothorn, that they could wall him out somewhat, and that's nothing I'm really looking forward to. Um, I really need to work my way around them well. If I don't do that, I'm going to lose this match. Because I don't like being scarfed when I when my scarfer is kind of lacking the best stabs. Uh, also, my so hidden power ghost um, against the jellison basically who walls me. He's not gonna do a lot of damage, <laughs> but hopefully I can force him to go for recover and freeze switch against him. That's that's the general idea at least. I mean, it's not like jellison can do a whole lot to me either. Uh, next one up is Thunderous. And Thunderous with the same idea like Keldio, fast enough to outspeed any 100 base mods. Has access to Thunder Wave, which of course is going to use in case Salamence set up Dragon Dances, and also can shut down any of his uh, Scarfers, uh, being of course either Victini or uh, his. Uh, sorry, either Victini or his Starapta. Uh, we have Thunderbolt because that hurts a lot of his team. We have. Uh, uh, let's see. What do we get more? Grass Knot. Yeah, we have Grass Knot for uh, Dawnfan because it oh goes to Dawnfan. And then we have Hidden Power Ice. Uh, and that is basically to hurt the other mons. Now, I do believe Toxicroak. No, uh, sorry, Ferrothorn is the only one who can deal with us kind of properly. Hidden Power Ice will not do a lot of damage. But at the same time, I do have mons that can deal with Ferrothorn quite easily. Be, of course, the foremost Charizard X. Short Sodex this time is jolly to make sure to speed time with Big Zini, Mega Guard War, and Star Raptor. And all I need is one Dragon Dance and it's GG. Uh, Big Zini can't really do a lot of damage to me, and uh, Big Zini can't survive a uh, plus one Dragon Claw, it definitely can. But it can take the aftermath of it. And of course, if it brings Toxic Croak afterwards, yeah, that only means I have to roost. I need to stay healthy. Um, I mean, very, very, very basic this time. A jolly max attack, max speed, Charizard X. Um, I'm still naturally bulky, which is important. But the most, the main idea with Charizard X this time is to break through when I can and just hurt things on the field. If I have a plus one, the only mon, like I said, that could survive that onslaught is Victini. The rest is swat like a fly. So, yeah. Um, definitely gonna try to use Charizard X as early as I can and if I actually don't do that I think my other team structure will make sure that I don't lack the, the momentum to pull that off. I know that Salamence is probably my biggest issue this game and um, Mega Guard War can be an issue if I don't play my cards right. Uh, I do believe I hit a power of fire will uh, almost Oko my two blade so I really need to preserve him well and uh, yeah, I don't know. That That's probably going to be the tougher part, and also dealing with Umbreon uh, properly. I know he's going to switch that in and out, I wish to support his team. I really need to cut that support every chance I get, and the only way I'm going to do that is by pressure play him, and make sure he doesn't really recover too well. So, no wait, I really just remember a thing. I don't have hidden power eyes on Thunders, I have Focus Blast for Umbreon. There we go. So Salamence can survive Thunderbolt, but Focus Blast is a 50% hit on Umbreon, which is extremely important this match, obviously. And so we do have the ways of dealing with Umbreon to some extent, and I hope that works. So with all that said, I uh, wish of course Esclo good luck and have fun. Uh, we're going to suppose about half an hour from now when I'm recording this. So, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what he's bringing. And of course, if you guys have watched this, make sure, like I said, to check out his channel to see his team planner for, the, of course, this battle.